<laughs> well, actually, I mean, so, oh. so yeah, so that, like, I mean, there, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about from the actual inauguration ceremony itself. Like I said, it, fest. it caused 1D psychic damage to me. I went to, right back to bed as soon as it was over, feeling very, very sorry that I, I did this for you, sweet listener. But the, the real gold mine, the really, the, the sort of like uh, semiotic cultural mind programming event that was a gold mine for the, for the Chapo mindset came in the evening hours. And I'm, of course, talking about the uh, live televised conference from in front of the Lincoln Memorial and then all from Zoom locations all over the country, uh, Celebrate America, hosted by Tom Hanks. And I just love the idea that, like, we're a week removed from, like, an angry mob looting Congress trying to stop the steal of the election because they think that the Democrats are in cahoots or are a satanic pedophile cabal. And then they're like, okay, yeah. okay, America, it's time to come together, heal, heal our divisions and unite as a country. Uh, here's a concert uh, hosted by Tom Hanks, leader of the cabal. <laughs> yes. It was a, that was it, a fucking end zone dance by the globalist that, that forces was, there. Yeah, they are definitely trying to antagonize these people. Oh, yeah, I like, honestly don't think so. I think that they're deluded enough that they like, okay, what are we trying to do? Everybody likes unity. Tom Hanks. We're trying to get unity back. Uh, we're a bunch of disgusting gargoyles and fossils. Uh, nobody likes us. What about celebrities? People like them? It's like, well, they oh. did, but now all of them have, because, you know, culture is fused with politics, all of them now have, like, a a value assigned to them and Tom Hanks is on the pedophile cabal side and him and everybody at that thing was, it was just like, hi, we're all uh, the, the people who eat baby brains and we're here to uh, own you and brag about how we stole the election. And it's funny because like 20 years ago, Tom Hanks was that kind of national figure of like everyone's mm -hmm. sort of like yeah. nice dad and a sort of like bland, like sort of inoffensive, wholesome presence. But, I mean, like, other than Bill Clinton, the Podestas, and, like, a few other people, like, Tom Hanks is a figure that is probably more obsessed over on, like, the cabal-obsessed, like, you know, QAnon right. And then it's a good question, Amber, whether this was spiking the football or whether they legitimately thought that this was like, oh, this, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to give something that every American can like. I don't, like, because... It, it could be either if, one. If, it could if, be either if one. If it's the latter, then that is truly delusional. Because I was watching this Celebrate America event and I just thought it was like high stepping into the end zone. I thought it was, this was yeah. like, the Democrats were just just fucking dabbing on everyone who didn't vote for them because it was like the whole fucking lineup of celebs. And we'll, we'll get to the, the, the one very funny sop that they threw to like the sort of red state America. But like overall, like, so when I started watching this thing, it's the uh, Celebrate America concert event. And I remember reading that this was like something that was organized and sort of pitched to the youth of America. Which, you know, like made sense because if you're under like 25 years old, like if and you watched even a, you love if Tom you watched Hanks. even a minute of that, you would have been like so fucking alienated and weirded out. You would not understand what the fuck was going on at all. But the youth of America, I would have thought you were talking about like teenagers, people who have like maybe voted for the first time or are going to be at that age soon. No, this was like, this was like every every second I watched of that thing and being addressed like as a viewer from television. I felt like the age that they were going for was about seven years old. The event should have been called, you're doing so good, America. You're doing so good. You've tried so hard. Here, now, here's a concert. Here's Justin Timberlake. Here's some fireworks. Ooh, yeah. don't and you like the like, fireworks? And, like, the whole tone of the thing was, like, people, like, are just so fucking desperate for, like, some sort of, like, public, you know, sort of goodwill feelings of that, like, you know, hey, like, it's been a tard year, but you know what? Like, it's getting better. And it's just, I, I really, I really do sympathize with like the need to like to feel that way. But like, as far as a national event goes, I just feel it's like it's wholly unearned at this point. And the whole, the whole tone of it was so condescending because it was just like, yeah, yeah, I know your Mima and Pep Pep are dead, but like, you know, just hold your head up. Better days are coming. And all the songs that people performed were like, again, Justin Timberlake came out there and he did not do sexy back or any of the fucking bangers any of the hits he did a new song called better days are coming so like i mean yeah. as, as best i can describe it though it was like okay so like like tom hanks was standing in front of the lincoln memorial and like the, like a lot of the performances were in front of the lincoln memorial and it was weird because like they got around the problem of like not having to have any like there, there was zero audience whatsoever so it was basically like you, you he was lit it's nighttime it's cold as shit out 
and it's like they're they're lit in like the person talking or like at a piano or something and then like way in the background you can see honest abe also lit up but it was a very dark palette it was just very very just shadow and then like these couple like sort of uh illuminated figures just sort of rising out of the shadows and it was a very I mean, it was a I, gothic. Yeah, it was, yeah, yes, it exactly. Gothic. It was very sort of like German. And everybody was wearing black gloves, like they were in a fucking giallo movie. <laughs> <laughs> like they were all just going to start strangling ballerinas at any moment. <laughs> 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 so yeah, like so Tom Hanks would, um, like he was sort of emceeing the event, and he'd be like, uh, "That's I'll tell you, like these, like that. That's great, America. Our healthcare workers this year have been working hard, and many of them have come up with some pretty innovative ways of getting through it all." One ER nurse went viral for one way. She was like, and it's just like, and then they, they, they cut to like a pre-produced package that would always begin with this little um, like animated text that says, celebrating Americans who, and then a, there's a blank space, and then it's filled in with Americans who feed us, Americans who <laughs> heal us, Americans who teach us. And it was like these sort of very... Um, uh, like I said, sort Americans of, who show whole Americans. <laughs> Many ways that Americans are trying to get through this fucking like massive shitty like yeah there was a depression. Yeah, there was a there um, was America America only fans. Americans who uh, blew up to the size of fifty feet and stomped on us like little bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was a, like an inspirational video package about all the Americans that are on OnlyFans right now to make ends meet, and then it was like the, these very like sort of pre-made to be viral kind of like it's very much like all the video all the montages and sort of video packages were very that like kind of now this style of like yeah. you know like the way of acknowledging how like overwhelmingly miserable and shitty everything is but like they play the little the little music the sort of upbeat music in the background and then there's a profile of a young sort of joy patroner who's like you know girls who have uh, they're running a lemonade stand and using the proceeds to, like, you know, uh, uh, raise money for Meals on Wheels in their neighborhood. And so there's all these kind of, like, very inspirational. But, like, the most of the people that they were profiling were either children or, like, people who taught children. It was, like, there was no... It, there were no like it didn't seem like there was a lot of adults. They were trying to convince us that the human race will persist. Yeah, <laughs> children. They're like, see, no, there'll, there'll be more. There'll be more. We're not done. There's, there's more. They'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I, there were some adults, but it was like uh, they had like the nurse who received the first uh, vaccine in the in the nation, and she's from New York. And then there was like a a kindergarten teacher from Seattle who uh, went viral for her way of like sort of remote learning and like teaching her classes in a funny, cool way. They didn't explain why or what, and then she was just there to be like, yeah. "It's my honor to introduce Foo Fighters." Yes. <laughs> sorry, I just do that every time I hear Foo Fighters. Uh, I'm sorry. Also, I'll can we just man. point out here, uh, remote learning does not work. Ever, everyone like has figured this out. Like they're going to, kids are going to look back on their whatever third grade year and ha just have a blank. It'll be like brain damage. It's going to be like a blank bunch of static for a whole year. I can't even fucking sit down and hold still for, and I'm an adult for like six hours. And now we're like having kids do it. They retain nothing. They will remember nothing. That is not how kids learn. Most of school is about learning how to not bite other kids and then like that's you know, propaganda how to work anyway. socially <laughs> you're not and then learning how to work to socially with other people and you know take instructions and you know whatever you cannot do that over zoom it is bullshit kids are just not going to well school. amber i mean like the funny thing was like in in the packages about like these sort of inspirational montages about teachers who are you know they're they're still working under incredible conditions and like you know they even have some funny funny ways of doing it that have gone viral the weird thing is that like they're profiling a first grade teacher but like the entire tone of the event and the person they're profiling itself are talking to you the viewer like you're in first grade like I said, it's just all very like, America, you're doing so good at overcoming adversity. You're coming together in difficult times. We just want to look at much. you. We love you. We love you and thank you. Enjoy this concert. It's, it's Foo Fighters. It's Dave Grohl, everybody. It's the New Radicals. Remember them? <laughs> Remember Bucket Hats? Okay, uh, there's another thing. There was another big uh, musical number that was just, it was just all Broadway uh, performers, and they did like a a patched together like mega zoom kind of like TikTok performance of one of the songs from Rent, which led into oh. a, like a, sort of like a, a medley, which led into Let the Sunshine In, and it was just so clearly like Let the Sunshine, on? being like, okay, like Trump is gone, we can finally like it's sun again, it's out, and I just gotta say, Joe like, Biden loves Rent. Yeah. 
Also, bunch of, bunch of, bunch musical? of, bunch of queer fellas. You know, they got the bug. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? So like I said, uh, they had a lot of like, you know, uh, profiles of young kids who were doing charity in their communities. And then they had a message from the International Space Station. And it was this lady and like her hair was like all up in the zero G. We left them up there. Yeah. We don't yeah. have the money to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just like, they're just like Leica now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, man, when you, when you want to go to heaven, you're that much closer there. <laughs> oh, wait. You can hitch your ride on a comet, Jack. I saw part of it. I really enjoyed. I flipped it on. And the first thing I saw was Demi Lovato inside some sort of space prison uh, <laughs> singing Lovely Day intercut with just random people like singing along to it. And yes, it very much felt like a thing you watch as they're uh, as they're euthanizing you to use your body for meat. Yeah, it was very, very it was very silent green. Oh, here was another really good set that happened. There was a sort of. Uh, a reggaeton sort of zoom beat and rhyme session with a guy named DJ Cassidy, where it was just like he did, <laughs> did he did two zoom Hell ins yes. with two two reggaeton artists who I wasn't familiar with, and like it was basically just like the democratic hive mind was like, ooh, seems like we've lost sort of a significant share of the Hispanic vote. We're counting on that. Hey, maybe we'll maybe we can win you, win you back with this DJ Cassidy. Everybody, <laughs> drop that beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I was to some of the other performances. Uh, I kicked off with uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, and you know what? Like, mm. if you have tuned into this program thinking that you know I'm ever going to say a bad word against the boss, you are sorely mistaken. Never. <laughs> I will never. I will never speak ill against the boss. I mean, he is the closest thing to like a national troubadour that we have. And you know, he started off with like mm -hmm. an acoustic, like solo performance right on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial of one of his songs called like Land of Hope and Dreams or something. And it's just like one of his sort of melancholy, like sort of bittersweet, but also uplifting ballads. And I was just thinking like, like all of these performances, no new material. Just th this is supposed to be fun. It's a celebration of America. Play the hits. I want to hear Born in the USA. Yeah. I want to hear Thunder Road. I want to hear some fucking anthems. The Foo Fighters. Glory days song, would be I, very appropriate. The idea like, that it, uh, it, the, the best days are behind us and all that's yeah. left is, uh, yeah. is melancholy nostalgia. That would be very like, on the nose. And, uh, then they had, they had an artist named uh, Yolanda Adams do a cover of Hallelujah. And that was set to sort of a montage of like, uh, like nighttime shots of cities around the country of like buildings being lit in, in red light as like a tribute to healthcare workers which i thought was like kind of effective i thought that was a little bit moving it was a good cover of the song even though even though that's like the most overused cover i do love the song but i feel like at this point it is for americans what ode to joy is for like germans where it's like it's this beautiful ecstatic thing but when you hear when we were talking to germans about ode to joy remember when we were on tour they're like yes it is just the backgrounds for us like that is what hallelujah is for americans like, it is good, but you hear it enough, you, you can't hear it anymore. And then, of course, of course, because this is brought to you by the Democratic Party and the Illuminati, John Legend had to be there. So like, you got obviously, it. contractually mandated. Obviously, John, I know I was shocked that Common didn't appear at the, and even once. That was, was an oversight, honestly. That was, that was, I mean, my God, if ever, I guess, I guess y you wouldn't want to say we're living in the future we always dreamed of at the current <laughs> moment. That might be a little awkward. Yeah. Uh, John Legend did a cover of Nina Simone's uh, "Feeling Good." And it's just like the thing with John Legend is like, you know, he's, that's a horny song. He's got a he's got a good voice. And like he covered the he's song. He's horny exactly, for democracy. He covered the song exactly right. But like he's just such a medium talent that it's just like it's too perfect. There's no there was no like a personality or like feeling to it. It was just like a technically perfect cover of someone else's song. And I think that like that sums up kind of John Legend's uh, very, very well, it's also mediocre like talent. The it's also like the water cooler or like, you know, an uh, early morning conference version of a song that is a horny song. Also, like, like hallelujah. Feeling, feeling good is very humpy. Yeah. 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 He's horny for a drain of chrome because you say that Tom <laughs> Hanks is like the, the king of the Illuminati. Uh, the only other uh, celebrities more personally connected in, in, in the conspiracy mind to the Illuminati are fucking Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. And, and to that, I got to that. I got to say, like, aim higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of get it because, like, how else do you explain why they're so fucking famous? 
Yeah. If it doesn't involve ritualistic child consumption. I don't know. I see. I feels like they they seemed nice. It, it was one of those people who was like it, when they were just sort of in the periphery. We were like, oh, these people are okay. Yeah. They and that, have, like, now they're marriage. everywhere. And then now they're like, you know, fucking like, you know, Instagramming their fucking miscarriage. And it's like, Jesus Christ, we wanted to like you. That's what the I, Drina Crub does. You lose perspective. A, a few too many nights uh, under uh, the Pentagon uh, in a black robe, and you don't know what people like to see anymore. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what people like to see or what I like to see. It was my personal favorite musical performance of the night was, like I said, I've alluded to this earlier. It was their one sop to, like, the red state America. They had a, the, a new song by Kyle Hubbard and Tim McGraw. Live from yes! Nashville. Live from Nashville. <laughs> and Kyle Hubbard, like, he starts talking about it, and he's like, he literally said that this song was inspired by God to reunite the yep. nation. <laughs> he was inspired by God to reunite the nation. And then, like, Tim McGraw <laughs> was like, you know, he's like, when Kyle, when Kyle sent me the lyrics to this song and uh, just this beautiful, hopeful message of fucking, uh, sorry, this beautiful, hopeful message <laughs> of coming together, uh, I just knew I had to be on it. Undivided is the Sandra title. Lindsay Undivided. And all of our health care and frontline workers, thank you. When I was in quarantine with COVID-19, I got to take a good hard look at myself. <laughs> Inspired by my faith in God, God to reunite. <laughs> yes, hey, you shitheads love this, right? <laughs> the song's message of unity and faith yeah, stirred I- my soul. And tonight, <laughs> especially as we look across the river at our strong, resilient, beautiful city of Nashville, we're honored to sing it for it. Yeah, the, but do you remember um, when Top 40 Country Music, like in the Bush era, was like the most jingoistic fucking, yeah. like, a like, boot 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 I race. thought about joining the Marines, so I'm going to stick the Quran in your ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ride, with camel, your, ride. I'm going to rape you with your prayer rug and <laughs> yeah. then do a concert in Kuwait. <laughs> yeah, is that that's that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Ride, camel, ride. And like, you know, that was Nashville responding to the political climate of the moment. You know, like they're not, like they're never going to be real, like, you know, firebrands or revolutionaries or anything. So like, I like now that like top 40 country music is responding to like the current, like sort of Biden political moment where they're just like, hey, hey, man, like it's not one way or the other. Like, let's reunited. We stand. Uh, Why has it got to be all black or all white? Come on, man. I think they found I think they found absolute dupes for it too. Like there is something I I believe the total sincerity of of those of those corn people we just saw. That's um there hasn't been a greater lyric since uh Johnny Rotten saying uh I could be white or I could be black and you're <laughs> yeah. like yeah dude. You could. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. The one thing that was like I don't know if you heard it in like the beginning like when it said sort of like talking about being bullied in 7th grade. I I love the the kind of like the 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 small bore concerns of like top forty like country music. It's just like they're talking about a song about like inspired by my faith to reunite the country, and like the first verse is just about like not fitting in in seventh grade. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's like, I mean, these are this is music for like think about the people that are watching this in earnest like that they felt that. Well, here's the funny thing about that, Felix. So, because like. There was, I'm sorry, like, it, like if you are, like, that, the Tim McGraw audience, like, how the fuck could you have sat through 40 minutes, 45 minutes of everything that came before it, whereas, like, the original cast of Rent sings Let the Sunshine In, and then you're just like, oh, okay, like, here, here, here's something for me, like, uh, okay, there is a place for me in Biden's America. Uh, you gotta eat your vegetables to get your Tim McGraw. That's what my mom always told me. <laughs> I was allowed to listen to my Tim McGraw <laughs> CD if I ate all my vegetables that night. All right, so uh, th- there's another. There was another pretty incredible moment that I got to talk about, and that's when they cut to, it's like a video package that was recorded earlier in the day, of Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, and George W. Bush all hanging out at the World War II Memorial in D.C. and just talking about like how great it is to have a peaceful transfer of power. Uh, Bill Clinton looked like a fucking wraith. He looked like absolute, oh, absolute. death. And then yeah, George Bill, W. Bush, Bill Clinton. Lady Elaine Fairchild, I'm telling you, he's turning into that puppet from Mr. Rogers. That's uh, that's Bill Clinton's uh, divine punishment for all his rapes, that every part of his body looks like a pussy now. <laughs> but okay, so like they're, they're standing there, and then George W. Bush, like I said, it was surreal to see him again because I realized that I hadn't seen his impish face or heard him speak in like well over a decade and what does this guy do he starts doing his old material he literally had a line 
about how I think if Americans treat their neighbors how they want to be loved themselves, like he, he did that old Bushism, but like intentionally in this video package. And the whole thing was supposed to be like, hey, we're three presidents of like, you know, of different, of you know, two different political parties. But like, hey, look, we're standing next to each other. We're hanging out and talking about like, and then Obama talked about like uh, uh, one of the first things that uh, I saw when I became president was the, uh, the grace and humility that uh, George showed me and Michelle when we were coming into office. And then I like that like implicitly implied in that is both Trump not showing up at the inauguration and the grace and humility Obama showed to Trump when he was on the way out the door. And then, like, they did mention... Well, on top of that, it's it's just, like, how clueless do you have to be to realize that, like, only the true psychopaths would not see that and be like, oh, there's literally no difference between any of them. Yeah, they're, they're all, all demons. They have no like, hi, we're yeah. the authors of your misery. And we're all having yeah. a good time together. <laughs> yes. They're guffawing with each other, and then they kick it back to Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks goes, literally says, wow, three former presidents meeting together like that so much of the rest of the world must look at that right now and just be amazed. And I yeah. was like, no, they fucking, no, they're fucking not. Like, who is fucking impressed yeah. by this shit? Yeah, only, yeah, you're, you're, you're assuming that you're trying to convince the Rube audience, and that, that, of course, is the funniest thing of all, is that the only people watching this are people who do not need to be convinced of any of this shit. They have already signed off on the entire flotilla of bullshit that you're trying to float down the river. They're all down with it. It's all it, it's just because you have to do it. There's no hope of, of speaking to anybody who's not already uh, completely zombified by this. It's just yeah, like the, the, it's the image of these three mummies fucking backslapping each other, like each of them individually, but like taken together, they're fucking their death toll is like covid times a thousand at this point oh yeah no. and yeah and, and like they're just they're all they're all hamming it up about fucking like how how unique and wonderful america is that we have a peaceful transition of power and it's just like gosh where else in the world could three former heads of state be in the same room without killing each other hey and now demi lovato singing the bill withers song america uh, I would just like to put it out there with some quick research. I saw that uh, Switzerland has 17 former living former heads of state. So uh, count the prime ministers, bitch. Well, well, that's <laughs> Switzerland. I mean, that's just like every. That's just that, a that, Nazi bank. No, yeah, literally. That's like, oh wow, the president of the bank is friends with the former president of the bank. What a shock! Yeah, that's not a country. <laughs> that's no, that's just an investment bank. This was like Disney Plus for people that enthusiastically oh, voted for Jamie Harrison. <laughs> but I was thinking about this thing that Yasha Levine posted where like just some fucking dog brain journalist was like posted the shitty fireworks. And Felix, was, like, that was not just a dog brain journalist. That was the head of communications for CNN, the entire network. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, he's the alpha dog. He said, this inspires our allies <laughs> and citizens and makes our enemies tremble in fear. It's like, yeah, Ch when China sees us do a fireworks show, they're petrified. Yeah. They, what do you think? They, they, this is also what deranged, you, you, like, the cold, the cold War mentality yeah, what, that these people have is it's like, oh, yeah, everyone's going to be so, they're going to either want to beat us or want to beat us. And it's like, you know, other countries have... Domestic interests. Yeah, China right? invented fireworks. I mean, like, <laughs> what do you think China? China is like they had undetectable nuclear submarines off the coast of California, and then they're like, Kim McGraw has uh, spoken out against bullying. Withdraw. <laughs> They're united again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh they, they were able to carry off a fireworks display in their militarily occupied, pandemic riddled capital city. Yeah. Yeah. New president hosts Tim McGraw concert, only a dozen killed. <laughs> America is back. Yeah. I'm floating in the Wuhan fucking wave pool watching this shit on my phone, and I'm terrified. They have like every time they want to like announce that it's lunchtime in Beijing. They probably do like a laser concert that's better than anything that's ever happened in America. <laughs> yeah. And they're amazed by this. Just... And moreover, like they just like this idea that Americans have that we've had like since the Cold War with the Soviet Union, like the fact that we're just completely it's it's like head cheerleader kind of syndrome. It's like no one is thinking about you. They have their own interests. We have continued this idea that we are the foremost in everyone's mind at all times. And, because, and like, whatever, to some degree, yes, we are like the, the hegemon 
And, you know, when we sneeze, we do it in people's eyes. But it's, this is insane. There's the, the, the number of, like, times that people are like, yep, other people watching this. Like, no one in any other country is watching this. It's bad TV. Yeah, no, it's... I don't see why anyone would watch it at all. Like, the guy, if you fucked up at work at Chinese intelligence, you have to watch that. <laughs> That's like yeah. a bomb assignment. Yeah. I'm just loving That's the idea. That's being on of, potato uh, peeling. I, I'm loving the idea of uh, some advisor, like, you know, frantically running down the hall, bursting into uh, President Xi's office, and then just being like, oh, Mr. President, Mr. President, um, Katy Perry just performed fireworks, two actual fireworks going off behind the Washington <laughs> Monument. We, we've got it. Let's just halt the plan. Stop. Stop. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Chairman, Chairman G, Joe Biden just award the Coca-Cola Unity and Equality Award to Jordan Sparks. You're going to want to see this. Mr. Well, Mr. 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 Chair, Mr. Chairman, they just made Gwen Stefani and uh, Gavin McGraw or whatever. The Frito Lay's body positivity ambassadors. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, quick question, quick question that I feel like I already know the answer to. Did they, as we predicted, they would not make any overtures whatsoever to BLM or uh, there was, you know, me too. Did they? Did yeah, they have to ID yeah, call? Yeah, Tim, Tim, yeah, Tim McGraw did a song where he's like. Wasn't easy being black when I was in seventh grade. <laughs> and it, now I'm now I'm white. Let's bomb Belgrade. <laughs> Let's do the Yugoslav War again. Used to be black. Now I'm white. Uh, I'm like Gavin McGraw or I'm the other guy. <laughs> uh, Amber, to answer your question, there was no actual like specific uh, package about Black Lives Matter or civil rights or anything like that. But in a lot of the the sort of cutting from across the country, like sort of like little Zoom clips of people uh, waving and cheering and holding up little signs about like where they're from or the, the town or a little message. I did see a couple of people have like, you know, BLM on like a piece of paper that they were holding up for like one second before it cut to an, another mm -hmm. inspiring child elsewhere in the country. Yeah, all of that stuff that you thought the Democrats are going to have to pay attention to now. No, they're not. They're in charge now, which means they can ignore you again. They yeah. should have... Uh... I mean, like, this entire thing was a fuck you, but it's, like, this was clearly done by, like, ex-Hillary and, like, Kamala people. They should have let Joe plan this. Absolutely. Like, like I was laughing the other day thinking about Joe uh, doing a list of movies like Obama does, and they have to suppress the list because he doesn't pick any movies that don't co-star chimps. <laughs> but, like, but, He's just, he's just listing all the movies that are locked in the Disney vault because of the blatant, like, <laughs> yeah. stereotypical yeah. Yeah. Black, uh, performances of them. Yeah, like, no, just, movies, the South, just movies. Dumbo. Just movies with, that have black actors that they put in blackface or, like, movies that co-star. Like, he, yeah, his favorite, he's like, best movie of all time, everyone knows it. Uh, bedtime for Bonzo. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, uh... So there would be a problem if he organized this because they would be like, sir, the big bopper died 60 years ago. <laughs> you know? But like if it was like a sort of 1960s like throwback thing and everyone was drinking big malts and stuff, I yep, think yeah. that would be like more. Just five, 15 different barbershop quartets. <laughs> yeah. <in a> row. <laughs> yeah. There would just be a there would be a segment with him and Dr. Jill just like paddling on a on a swan boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Up, the, up the national pool, like the reflecting pool in the National Mall, yeah. holding hands. I would they, love to like, see. I would they love could to probably see a, convince him that Elvis is alive. I would have loved to have Elvis seen a sort of like a a North Korean style sort of like a, a mass ten thousand people marching in unison turning over cards to show like Joe Biden's big face set to camp town yeah. races to a live rendition <laughs> of camp town races. And it just like, like a hundred thousand people marching in unison in a giant stadium, all overturned cards. And it's like, look everybody, it's the bobtail mag. I bet my money on her. Everyone rise for the Amos and Andy theme song. <laughs> Well, there we go. Uh, that was celebrating America. Um, just, I'd like to say again, you're doing, you're doing so good, America. We're doing great, America. We're, do, we're, do, we're, we're very just, proud of been, you. It's been tough, but we're so proud of you. We're so proud of how immaturely you've handled this last. It's been year. two weeks since any of you tried to storm the Capitol building. We're very proud <laughs> yeah. that you haven't done anything. And since uh, then. you know, congratulations to everyone who you know did it, who lived through it, who. Uh, whose life was largely unchanged except the TV was annoying to them 
but they made it. 